What's up guys, this is Chris Hasty from Empty Pockets Ironworks. Uh, we're going to try a little bit different video format today. Um, as you can see, I'm talking live to the camera. Uh, for today's project, we're just going to kind of do a video vlog. I've never done one of these before. I've talked on the camera for giveaways and that sort of thing. So unfortunately, without editing the video uh, in the regular format, I can't edit out dogs barking, kids playing sirens, you know, that sort of thing. I live, unfortunately, on a very busy street in town. So, uh, for today, we're going to be attempting to make this bad boy. I drew this up last night. Hopefully the camera's focused. Um, yeah, this is going to hopefully be a cow skull. And then this little odd piece here, once it is formed, very much like our dragon skull the other day, is going to be the, uh, the horns. And uh, so yeah, join along today. It is going to be hot. It's going to be about 95 with a heat index of over 100. So I will have the fans going later. Depending on how that affects the audio, I may end up overdubbing that part in the video. Uh, I'll review it first. Hopefully it's not cut and choppy and that sort of thing. So anyway, Thank you for joining me. Remember to like, subscribe, comment. Um, I really enjoy the comments. I absolutely, absolutely enjoy the comments. I love hearing that people are actually watching the videos. Uh, anytime I upload a video that is over 10 minutes long and I hear people comment on stuff that was 15 minutes into the video, uh, you know, out of a 25 minute video, that tells me that you guys are actually watching and it's really important to me. Um, I'm really hoping that this continues to grow, just like our business, Empty Pockets Iron Works. It is way bigger than anything I ever figured that it would be. Uh, I don't consider what I do to be anything special. I'm just an individual that likes to make things. Um, I grew up in a shop. I love being out in the shop. So with, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say talent, but with my certain abilities, I really appreciate you guys taking an interest in it and hope that we can continue to grow together. And uh, with that, I appreciate it. So follow along, thank you. So as you can see here, we've got our template drawn out. Here is both of the horns. Here's what I'm hoping to be the cow skull. And uh, basically what we're gonna do, cow skulls are kind of flat. So this point here at the front of the nose, back to basically the inset of this curve here is going to be where we break it over and uh, then it'll go into the forge. You'll see later on I'm actually going to have to move some of the forge bricks out so that we can utilize the whole thing. Hopefully it fits. I don't know if it will or not. And uh, yeah, so throughout the video today, like I said, this is going to be kind of in a vlog format. Uh, air compressor, fans, that sort of thing, all that's going to kick on. It's all loud and uh, so I may have to do some overdubbing. I'm going to try to avoid it. If anything, I may end up turning the volume down on those segments and then give you some lovely music to listen to. So anyway, let's get started. pieces cut out. Ugh, can't talk today. So, just like in the previous video, now it's time to knock the little bit of slag that we have off. It's not real important, but like I said, I'm kind of a perfectionist. I think I've mentioned that before in other videos. Um, I know it's there, and if somebody is to buy this, I don't want them to flip the piece over and be like, oh man, this guy didn't even clean this up. You know, what am I going to pay for? It? Just just not a good combination. So clean up your parts, make them look the best that you can. Uh, it's your art. You're putting yourself out there, so make sure that you're putting the best out there. So uh, I've seen a lot of people on different channels and that sort of thing. They have a tendency to lay the part down flat and they want to hit the slag straight on. Uh, 
if you've got the luxury of having a part that has a lot of surface area, I found that it's easier just to take your your chip hammer and slot, and uh, it kind of sets you up in a good angle to knock off that excess. So real quickly, I'm going to clean this up, and then we're going to work on breaking this thing open. Okay, so we've got our pieces cleaned up. And now we've got to figure out how we're going to bend this thing over. Uh, like I mentioned, we're going to go from this point here to pretty much an even spot over here, even in the respect from this point to the top of the eye socket. Uh, the cow skull that I'm basing this off of is inside. The front of it is broke. This part is actually missing. So there's a lot of this that I'm going to be making up as we go along. And, uh, but that's kind of the neat thing about art. It doesn't have to be exact. It is your representation. So for reference, the cow skull itself is 11 inches wide by 11 and a half inches long. So being at 11 and a half, we're gonna put a mark at five and a half to mark center. Looks like the corner of our eye socket up near the top is going to be right at two and a quarter. So we're going to mark this at two inches. Two inches from center. If it's 11 inches wide, we're going to go two inches from center on both sides. And that will give us our break point. Okay, so as you can see, and I'm awfully close to the camera, so hopefully that audio there doesn't blast your eardrums out. Uh, our line is just over too tall. Now I have a couple options here. I could take the time to cut out some other material and make some slip-in false jaws to help hold this and break it over. That's great, but I'd end up probably having to cut some material which then in turn I may need later on for something else. Um, just not a good setup. So we're going to go try the reed vise. If that doesn't work, we're going to try one of the post leg vices. Uh, the unfortunate thing about those is those are freestanding and uh, so they do have a tendency to move around. But uh, yeah, bummer. Future reference might need to take the size of the cow skull down. So as you can see here in my large, I believe this is a six inch, maybe five inch uh, post leg vise. It does fit, fits nicely actually got a little bit of room down here below and uh, so we'll use this typically three good wax with about a two and a half pound hammer uh, at least on the deer skulls that's how it works uh, means you're going to be breaking this side too I suggest hitting around this area so come in from the side straight angle blows that way that it bends the material straight over and uh, so we're going to give that a try and then we'll move on it is getting hot out here already, so I may end up having to turn the fan on, especially when I fire up the forge. So, that worked pretty good, but we've got a long ways to go. So we're going to have to keep working across here. I can already see a little bit of indentation, which is fine because the cow skull actually dips in right here, comes out, and it has a hump in the back. So, of course, you usually plan on doing that stuff in the forge or uh, on a wooden block. We'll get to that later. So for now, let's just keep beating on it. And as you hit this on the opposite side, even though we broke that over pretty close to a 90, it is going to try to flare back out. So when I pop this out of the vise, you'll be able to see it. It's fairly even. So, now looking at this here, this needs to get cut further up into here. This area here is going to get bent back, may get reshaped. I may end up having to cut out more parts. Now in the front here, I'm going to end up splitting this back further. This will get rounded, this will get pulled in. 
our little jaw pieces, or excuse me, front of the nose pieces down here will get bent in. And I will probably have to cut out the pieces that uh, continue rounding this out. There's two segments, they've both got a hole in them down here. My skull is missing that, but from knowing what a cow skull looks like, I know that they have those parts. And, uh, so, we'll continue on and hopefully this doesn't end up as a failure, but right now it's still looking pretty promising. It's always uh, makes you a little nervous when you're doing things like this, especially while you're recording. So before I do any cutting, like I mentioned earlier, we will need to cut up around the back side of the eye socket to allow this piece to fold in. Um, in the forge, the jawline right here with the teeth, that's going to be brought in. This has got to dip in right here on both sides. Uh, I've got to kind of cone this. Uh, this out here is flat, but it also has a divot here, which kind of rounds this out. And uh, so to achieve that, we're going to use an old beat up wood block. This is what I use for making our feathers and, and our leaf bowls and that sort of thing. You can see it's indented here. That is all from just red hot heat on the block. Sometimes I'll put water on it. Uh, I'm actually going to be kind of sad when this thing is no longer usable. So anyway, right now though, as much shaping as we can do before we put it into the forge is um, pretty beneficial. So I'm going to kind of knock this point out here. Um, let me see. I'm going to use my main hammer, which is my two and a half pound, I don't know, small hammer. Um, basically, I'm just going to kind of hit it back here. I'm going to kind of round this out. I may actually kind of work forward. Uh, in the forge later on, I can straighten a lot of that out. Uh, so, But any pre-bending that you can get done before you put it into the forge will save you not only time, but fuel. So, here we go. Okay, so back again. As you can see, I've already drawn this out. I don't know if you can see it in the light of the camera or not, but uh, about half an inch, three quarter of an inch down, we went in just above the eye socket and around and then we rounded this part. And like I said before, this is going to get folded in and down to give that 3D effect. This will be left out hanging. We'll kind of turn it in. We may use some scrap items later and attach that to make it blend in with where the horn comes out. Um, amazingly, just with our little simple brakes, it does resemble a cow skull already. So, pretty proud of that. Now, going from this area across this is where you hope that everything stays square and it looks like we have so I know about right over here is where we're going to be drawing our line so like I said three quarters to an inch down uh, it's a little bit shorter at this end basically I just kind of take and drag my hand and we're going to go around and then follow this down and around this actually tapers out like so and that should be pretty close so anyway this cow skull does not have teeth I did not mention that earlier when I was cutting this out the teeth would actually be further down here um, I would rather make teeth separately I don't think we're gonna put any into this because it would make it set up real high and uh, we still want the, the horns to stick out and look look cool uh, may hang on the wall, may look good sitting down. I don't know. Still needs a lot of shaping up here. This needs to be drawn in. It's probably going to deform a lot when I put it into the forge and start hitting because this this portion here needs to be tapered in. Now then a little quick note here. When we go to cut this with the plasma, this line here will not get cut. So do not cut this line. We're going to cut along here up to this point here. That way that stays attached. Should have mentioned that earlier, didn't. Hopefully you guys caught on to that.
So now it's time to light the forge. suggest that you run it for about five minutes and then shut it off, but uh, ain't nobody got time for that. So hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm getting ready to pull the skull out. I've done a little bit of work without recording. Not a whole lot. Just kind of bent in the pieces that I told you I was going to bend in. Uh, basically, I'm just going to pull it out. And now we're going to start trying to shape around the front of the jaw. I don't know how well this will work. We're going to try it though. Okay, so we've got our cow skull specimen pretty well filled out. Uh, as you can see, it actually looks like a cow skull. Pretty cool. And, uh, not the two mile horn, but I'm actually impressed that that worked out as well as it did. Now, by hand, I will bend these in, kind of like that, but with a little bit more shaping. And, uh, then we might have to build this up up here for our horns, which is what we're getting ready to start now. Now, I may end up having to pull out the bricks, as I mentioned earlier, in the forge to allow these to fit. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, and I may leave this in the front. I may kind of turn those, make them flat. Uh, like I said, the skull that I'm basing this off of is broken. This is all missing in the front. Uh, it's pretty straight, needs a little bit of tweaking, 
I may take the uh, angle grinder and notch this up a little ways and then just kind of tack it on the inside just to give it that look that it's got that, that split down the center of the nostril. And uh, yeah, so let's keep on trucking. Sorry I'm not showing all the detail of the hammer work. Um, basically I use this toe ball in the vise and just basically kind of hit around the top using it kind of like a dimple die. As you hit, it pushes out and pushes in at the same time. Just get creative with your metal work. I mean, anything that you go to do, just like making this skull, it's a matter of making things simple. I take a three-dimensional object in my mind, make it into a 2D plane, like you see in the template earlier that I made to draw this out. Basing it off of how that three-dimensional drawing would be flattened out. And, uh, yeah, pretty cool. It's a fun thing to do. Give it a try. Uh, just choose a particular animal. I mean, I wouldn't start out with, you know, a rhino or anything like that. But, you know, choose something that's fairly simple. Base it off of that. Deer skulls are pretty asymmetrical. That's the reason I started making those. And uh, once you figure out how to do those, things like this go a lot easier. So let's move on. I'm going to be honest with you, I've never done one this short and wide before. This is kind of based off of our calla lily. So we're going to give it a try. May it work, may not. Okay, so as you can see here, we have our finished parts. And I didn't show it in the video. You can backtrack to our last uh, Dragon Skull build and uh, fast forward through the video, you'll be able to see where I just kind of heat these up and bend them over. Um, there's nothing really to it. The metal's hot, it moves. Just try not to separate your seams. So as you can see, the seam itself should join right back here and that looks pretty good however I would like to add some detail if you look at an actual cow skull it's got a tapered portion here beneath the horn now where this is a skull there should be a little bit of a gap and then the tapered part that's actually shorter than the horn itself I would like to think that we could probably hammer that down around this lip here just to kind of draw it in a little bit to give it that effect. So I'm going to try it. I'm not going to record it because I don't know how well it's going to work. Uh, but I'm going to try to basically just kind of chamfer this down uh, all the way around to reverse the cone basically. And uh, if that works out real well then we'll start welding these on. Okay, so I've got the pieces chamfered down. You can see basically all I did was I did, I actually went on the end of the anvil and uh, just kind of hit at an angle and brought the ends of those cones down. And uh, so, with that being said, we're going to position these on here with the seam towards the back. The horn ends kind of tilted up and back. And we'll get these tacked on and then we'll fill weld them. And 
and see what we end up with. Okay, so as you can see here, I opted instead of texturing the horns, uh, using an idea of my wife's, I didn't go quite to the extent that she did. I've, if it had been up to her, I'd have taken it over to the buffer and polished these out to almost a mere finish. But, what I did do was use a buffing wheel. And uh, depending on what part of the country you're in, this might also be called a blending disc. This one here is about 60 grit, and it's more down, so it's probably about 100, 120. And uh, it just kind of smooths and blends. Now what we're going to do here is use just a wire wheel on an old drill that I've got, and we're just going to kind of clean this up a little bit. And then I've got some special guests that I'm going to introduce you to here momentarily. So. So I formed out the little loop. This is going to go right onto the divot of the skull on the inside. And then we'll adjust a little bit and pull weld it. But this will also act as a kickstand if you want to display the skull on a table or a bench. So we put the welder back on with a tack. All right, folks, so hopefully the audio works out real well. Here is the almost finished cow skull. Of course, with anything that we do, it's clear coated afterwards. That's the finishing touch. I opted not to finish this out in the prop because the one that I've got is broken as well. Most of them that you find have been laying out in the weeds forever. They're broken. Rats and mice and that sort of thing, they chew them up. So anyway, as you can see here, this is my lovely wife. This is Laura. She's the one that helps me not only edit, but uh, keeps me sane, keeps me in line, keeps me in check and uh, manages the five boys and co-owner and helps run the business, Empty Pocket Pocket. So the noisemaker that you hear over here, that's our youngest one, that's our two and a half year old. And uh, yeah, he's saying hi. So you'll see him in some videos eventually too. So we're gonna throw some clear coat on this thing. And uh, I just wanted you to see my better hand. I might actually let her clear coat this thing. So anyway, I think I'll do that. Here you go.